What's going on, guys? It's Mike from the Hardcover Comic here. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about an upcoming omnibus, um, but I wanted to talk about the series behind it. Um, so a as we all know, coming soon, and I believe it's a couple months, we have the Swamp Thing by Nancy A. Collins omnibus coming out. Um, this book's going to collect issues number 110 through 139, as well as annual 6 and 7 from Swamp Thing Volume 2. Um, this was the Vertigo series. Um, that, you know, Alan Moore had worked on previously. Um, this is the, the predecessor run to um, the Grant Morrison and then Mark Millar runs that came afterwards to wrap up the volume. Um, so Nancy Collins at the time, um, when she started writing Swamp Thing, uh, she, you know, she was doing some Sonya Blue novels, um, vampire-based stuff. And, um, you know, DC got her uh, to, to pick up the slack, I guess. Swamp Thing wasn't doing too well. Um, we got some amazing covers here by John Higgins and Charles Vess. Uh, I do not have the entire run, but um, I do have a good chunk of it. So um, I just wanted to take a look at it, show you guys some of the content inside. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any of the Tom Mandrake issues, which was, um, I believe, the first six issues or so at the start of the run. So issues 110 through 115. Was he 116? Whatever. I, I don't remember which ones it was. I believe it was through 115. Um, but either way, we'll get to see some amazing Scott Eaton work. Um, his artwork's amazing. I can't wait to see it in uh, an oversized format. Um, and w I, I'm curious to know if they're going to do uh, some recoloring again. But uh, j just to talk, I guess, a little bit um, about the storyline. So, so this run took place in uh, 19, well, it was 1991 through 1994. It was about two and a half years that Nancy A. Collins was on the title, um, which makes sense with the number of issues she did. Um, these these felt more so like horror stories. If you've read the Alan Moore run, um, you know they get very elemental and supernatural with uh, with the plots, as does Mark Millar um, after Nancy A. Collins. But um, Nancy A. Collins' run for me was um, it definitely had the supernatural going for it. Um, it you know um, there were some weird stories um, that, that had some supernatural elements to it, but it did have a lot of really great horror elements, you know, from the monsters themselves to the, the acts happening within the book. Um, you know, one guy wearing another guy's skin, um, real, real creepy stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I, I thought the stories were actually pretty entertaining and, and pretty enlightening in terms of getting to know Swamp Thing um, a little more intimately as a character. And that goes for you know, everyone else in the book, um, Abby, as well as uh, Tefe, um, and, you know, some of the other side characters that show up. Um, but, you know, there's stories about um, bad corn fertilizer causing deformations. One thing I do want to mention is we also do see, um, I believe this was the return of the Sunderland Corporation, um, who was, you know, involved with um, the origin of Swamp Thing. Um, so, so they return as, as a prominent villain in Nancy A. Collins' run, um, among other characters. Um, you know, Anton Arcane. Uh, it, it, it's really cool g seeing, you know, some of the, the other events that were happening within um, the, the Vertigo universe have an impact on the Swamp Thing title, such as, uh, you know, in one issue, um, they reference that, you know, Lucifer has quit, um, and he, he stopped being basically the head honcho of hell, um, and so that influences the Swamp Thing storyline uh, in a very interesting way. Um, and you know she Nancy Collins al also writes about you know activist groups, um, you know anti-pollution groups, um, stuff like that. You know they're in getting assassinated. Um, obviously, folks hunting down Swamp Thing. Um, but yeah, one of the cool things was you can see here we we saw the return of Anton Arcane and the Unmen, um, and and as he sort of did a little uh, body body possession there. Um, you know, I, I really dig I really dig the covers on this series. Um, you know, John Higgins and Charles Vess are, are are these really, I mean, amazing painters that just drew these creepy, but exciting covers. Um, and you know, between the two of them, it was always interesting to see what was going on. But like I mentioned, there are uh, a good amount of of monsters within this. Um, a lot of action, a lot of weirdness going on. But I did really enjoy that um, it had a bit of the horror aspect to it. Um, it's a series that really grows on you. Um, the first, you know, y you, you read a couple issues and it, it may not seem like it'll be your thing, but um, as you keep going, uh, you get to feel that connection with the characters and um, you get a feel for how Nancy A. Collins is writing. Um, and it's, it's really great once you get used to it. I'm hoping 
n- since we're getting this, is the first time it's been reprinted since the original issues were released, which is a huge deal. Um, I'm very excited to see the design of it. I don't know if that's been shown yet, but you know, it's a Swamp Thing book, so hopefully it's real nice, um, real nice graphics. And uh, you know, if this is a successful seller, hopefully we'll see a Grant Morrison, Mark Millar book soon. Hopefully. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, this was Mike from the Hardcover Comic. Let me know if you're excited for the Omnibus, if you've read the series, what your thoughts are. And until next time, as always, you stay classy, Internet.